Ruth, I, a lot of people I was talking to were saying that politics was going to ultimately kill this deal, but it turns out it was the regulator. Walk us through what went, what went on. Yes, so they asked them whether they could divest MTS, which is an electronic trading platform for European government bonds, and LSE said that they were not willing to do that. I mean, they've already agreed to sell their French clearinghouse yeah. unit. And there was some talk that Deutsche Börse was open to the idea, but London Stock Exchange said, no, don't think that's going to happen. So they still need to wait for the commission to come back to them, which is at the end of this month, maybe early April. But they're saying the chances of this deal going through are now looking not so good. This is a Brexit casualty? Uh, did Brexit have a role to play in it? Absolutely, because they announced the deal two months before Brexit. And then once Brexit happened, there was this whole debate about if you merge, where is the headquarters going to be, right? If it's in London, then you're outside the European Union. And if it's in Frankfurt, then the UK says, well, that's not helping us. Um, so there's been so much of politics around it as well. Rupert, I can't ask you about the specifics of this deal. But, but nevertheless, is this part of a trend that you would expect to now see play out, that industrial leaders aren't able to make decisions, aren't able to understand exactly what the lie of the land looks like as you look across Europe. Are there going to be more and more and more of these kind of transactions? Well, I definitely think that, yeah, uh, business leaders need to understand that they are going to be confronting probably a more mercantilist approach from uh, the European Union when it comes to Britain. And, you know, we saw another example of that recently, uh, news about the, the Commission refining its attitude to equivalents. Yep. Uh, a lot of banks uh, and other institutions in the UK thinking maybe they could carry on doing business with the rest of the European Union through equivalence rules. I think it's a sign that the Commission is yeah, trying to kind of reduce the scale of that and make it a much less certain footing, forcing uh, organisations to locate more activities in the European Union. And I think this is a very similar example. Rupert, all of this is about volume, about unit transactions and about derivatives and other synthetic investments as an alternative to old block and terracle stocks and bonds. Are we going to be in five years in the city? Are we going to be in five years in Europe in a more sophisticated derivative space? Or are we going back to exchanges and transactions that are simpler? Uh, I, I can't see the, the markets rolling back. I, I think that people will have to find solutions that allow people to carry on with these kinds of instruments, but in ways that are appropriate to the new regulatory environment. I think that will in, involve some activity moving to the European Union. I can't see it otherwise. But yeah. at the same time, there's a lot of the, you know, the, the London hub is going to be is not going to be dismantled in its entirety. It's still going to remain a very major yeah. financial centre for a lot of this activity. Ruth, Europe's been out front on this. Are these things dinosaurs? I, I mean, help me here with where they're going to be. I mean, there's the quiet of a electronic trading and it's away from what we do in America. Are they dinosaurs? I think it might be it might be a little early to use that term yet, but the thing that we are now focusing on, the next step is, you know, Intercontinental Exchange, which is on your turf, had made an approach for LSE last year. So the question everybody is asking is if this falls apart and if they can't have this European giant to compete against the exchanges in the US and Asia, does ICE come back now? And if they do, can they get something done in a post-Brexit UK? Remember Kraft Heinz and Unilever?